Welcome to this shared worship service. My name is Irene T. I'm Minister of Westminster United Church, and I'm joined by Reverend Jeff Werner from Cawthor Park United Church. Our music director is Christine McDougall, and we're joined by our choir singers, Dorothea Fair, John McDougall, and Lynette Panganiban. And our thanks to videographer Walter Reed and our floral arranger, Kay Montford. We acknowledge that when we gather in this space and in many of our homes, we are gathering on the traditional territories of indigenous folks who have called this land home for thousands of years. We remember Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and later the Mississauga of the Credit First Nations. Today, this remains the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in their community and to share and respect Mother Earth. Good friends, we are together, but separate. Each human, God's spirit breathed into the soil of the earth. Spirit of a living God, move among us all. Enter our heart, O oh God. Take root in our lives. Make us one in heart and mind. Make us one in love. Receive God's strengthening gifts as we worship together this day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good friends, let us center ourselves in the life of God through prayer. Merciful God, we have been sown on Mother Earth like seeds in the field. It is extraordinary that 360,000 babies are born each day. Together, we are nourished and nurtured. We are blessed by your desire for people to grow with roots strengthened by a nurturing community in height achieved as we reach toward the image of divine creativity and the truth of love, as we flower in beauty like the lilies of the field, like the apple tree of the Song of Solomon, like the rose of Sharon. If and when we become like thorns choking out the life in others, not allowing them to breathe, forgive us. When we uproot those whom we believe do not belong in our part of the field, Forgive us. When we are reluctant to acknowledge that we ourselves are a mixture of weeds and wheat, forgive us. And now to you, the God who knows us inside and out, through and through, we offer up this time of worship for your glory to be revealed in word and in deed. Bring on the harvest you desire from your church. Amen.
he put before them another parable. He said, the kingdom of God may be compared to somebody who sowed good seed in their field. And then while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. And then they went away. So that when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared as well. So the slaves of the householder, they said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He said, an enemy has done this. They asked him, would you like us to gather them up? And he said, no, no, because in gathering them up, then you would uproot the wheat as well. No, we'll wait to the harvest. And when the harvest comes, I will tell the reapers, collect up the wheat and bind it into bundles to be burned. Uh, but gather the, the wheat and put it in my barn. So he left the crowds and he went back in the house, but the disciples followed him and they approached him. They said, explain to us this parable of the weeds in the field. He said, the one who sows the good seed is the human one. And the field, well, that's the world. And the good seed, that's the children of the kingdom. And the weeds, that is the children of the evil one. And the enemy is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the angels, they are the reapers. So just as the weeds are collected up and they are burnt with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The human one will send his angels out into his kingdom and they will collect out of the kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the children of the righteous, they will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Let anyone who has ears here. Here's a story from the Fellowship Corner put together by Jackie Super, one of our church members, each week. A preacher was completing a temperance sermon. With great expression, he said, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. With even greater emphasis, he said, and if I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and throw it all in the river. And finally, he said, and if I had all the whiskey in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. He sat down. The choir leader then stood up very cautiously and announced with a smile, for our closing hymn, we will sing hymn number 365, Shall We Gather at the River? Last Sunday, we heard the parable of the sower and the seed. In that parable, a farmer sows seeds. Some fell on a path, some on rocky ground, some on thorns, and some fell on good soil. The lesson of the parable was that the words Jesus was preaching have to take root inside our consciousness and over time bear fruit. In today's reading, the focus is on the kind of seed. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to someone who sowed good seed in the field. You need to remember that Jesus was talking to rural folk who engaged in farming. Therefore, he used symbols that they could identify with, such as seeds and harvest time. Today in our society, not everyone has a garden. I know some of you enjoy gardening, 
Reverend Jeff shared a gardening story with us last week in which he was astonished to find a family of bunnies in his garden. In my own family, it is Lee who is the gardener. I just come in to help when it's time for harvesting. But I do know one thing. Lee spends a lot of time weeding the garden. Weeds are really unwanted plants. If you let them grow, they will compete with the plants that you want to nurture for nutrients and for water. So it is a big surprise when we come to our gospel story to hear the decision of the householder. The farmhands were quite anxious when they noticed weeds growing alongside the wheat. The weeds were probably darnel, a type of rye grass. Darnel plants are said to be poisonous. So as soon as the farmhands noticed them, they wanted to pull them out. But what did the householder say? I'm going to paraphrase here. Don't gather the weeds now, because if you do, you'll uproot the wheat along with them. Instead, let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, the reapers will separate them. The householder's reason not to remove them is that when you pull out the darnel plant, you risk dislodging the wheat. Better let them grow together until it is time for harvest. A second reason to let the weeds grow is that they are useful. The weeds can be used as fuel. What does this parable have to do with our lives? The weeds could represent bad elements in our church and in our society. In any organization, there are those who perceive themselves to be the good seeds and others who are bad seeds. Sometimes we think, if only the bad seeds seeds were not present, everything would be hunky-dory. There's a tension between the urge to purge imperfection and the responsibility to accept people, to listen to one another, and to reconcile differences. In the same way, in the wider society, there are those whom society perceives as weeds. The issue of racism has been prominent in the news thanks to the Black Lives Matter movement. We have become more aware of the scourge racism has been on people of color. Because it is systemic, it is embedded in the whole society. How do we become anti-racist individuals and an anti-racist church? We do need to examine our individual words and actions and our political social systems. Our Westminster Community Action Team members are starting to have conversations about this. They would like to learn more and educate themselves. And they invite others who are interested in this subject to participate and share their ideas. Here's a story from July 11th Toronto Star article. Some of you may have read about racism felt by Chinese Canadians because of the corona coronavirus pandemic. 8% of Chinese Canadians who responded to an Angus Reid survey said they had been physically attacked by strangers during the pandemic. 43% reported being threatened or intimidated. In March in Vancouver, a stranger pushed a 92-year-old Asian man with dementia to the ground outside a convenience store while yelling racist insults about COVID-19. In another incident, a man punched a woman of Asian descent near a bus stop downtown and walked away. A 21-year-old student named Tina Hong of Chinese and Vietnamese descent, currently residing in Vancouver, said that she endured months of dirty looks from strangers. One day, Tina Hong boarded a bus after her classes at a downtown Vancouver campus. She was pleased to see that most passengers were physically distancing. She sat down at an empty area near the middle of the bus. But soon, a white man got on board and walked by a row of people who were wearing masks and who all happened to be people of color. This man then yelled out a racist comment, something to do with calling it a Chinese virus. 
At that moment, Tina, who had had enough with the dirty look she endured, decided to say something. She said, hey, that's really racist. Don't say that. It's very rude of you. The man then stopped in front of her and stood over her and let out another racist comment. That's when other passengers on the bus stepped in. And that is the good news of the story. Two older women began to lecture and educate this man about why people wear masks. Other passengers told the man, don't be racist. Some passengers chose more subtle means of solidarity, changing their seats to stand or sit protectively around Tina, who by then had burst into tears. Because of the support of her fellow passengers, Tina later said that she felt hopeful about the future. She said, Canada has systemic racism, but people are willing to stand up for change, and that makes me proud to be Canadian. I found this story both troubling and hopeful. As a person of Chinese descent myself, I haven't personally experienced this kind, of, this kind of treatment during the pandemic, but I can empathize. I can identify with young Tina. No one should go through this kind of treatment and be blamed for the transmission of the virus just because of their skin color and looks. Hopeful because I'm inspired by the way Tina spoke out at the moment. Sometimes I'm afraid to say something when it happens and hopeful for the support that Tina received on the bus. Tina took the risk to say something. She was not alone to challenge this man as the other passengers stepped in. This gives me great hope. Sometimes we just have to take risk of saying something at the moment. What would you do if you were in this situation? How do we equip ourselves so that we know how to act in such moments? As terrible as what this man said, the other passengers continued to treat him humanely. They continued to talk to him and to help him understand. Although we do not see ourselves being racist like this man, we ourselves may have thought unkind thoughts we participate in racist systems inadvertently. Some of us benefit from this system. None of us is pure. We are a mixture of wheat and weeds. We all have the capacity to do good and to do bad. Thomas Long, a theologian, writes that we insiders, in quote, need to remember that we are ourselves a mixture of good and evil. Sometimes we are faithful and sometimes we are not." End of quote. The good news is that God's realm contains all of us, a mixture of wheat and weed. The parable is calling on the disciples and on us to be patient and to leave the judgment to God. Our task is to do what is the most loving thing. Our job is to put ourselves in a place where we can be challenged to grow, such as a church community. And God is aware of our struggles with evil and sin, with the choices in front of us. And some of us may have had good and loving upbringing, and some of us may have been raised in inadequate nurturing conditions. But God coaxes us to be the best that we can be. God will nourish and encourage so we can grow towards the way of God. God who loves us constantly calls us to our best possibility. And I believe it was the Spirit of God who worked through Tina Hong and the other passengers to challenge this man, calling him out on his actions and explaining to him why he could not talk in this way. I'd like to share another true story. Many years ago, Sylvie, my brother's wife, had just finished grocery shopping. She was walking to her car in a parking lot. Then she saw a driver backing out and hitting another parked car. The driver got out, surveyed the damage, 
but got back into her car and was about to drive off. Sylvie had to stop her and insist that she go into the store and find the owner of the damaged car. Sylvie just stood there and waited. So the driver had no choice but to go into the store and find the owner of the car and admit her wrong. I think the driver of the car will eventually thank Sylvie for what she did. Because of Sylvie's action, the driver ended up doing the right thing and not having to carry guilt on her conscience. Sometimes we need to be reminded to do the right thing by someone who is firm with us. I think maybe God is like that. God will coax us encourage and guide us to do the right thing. God is like the head gardener who urges the workers to give the weeds some more time. God will help each of us grow to be children of the kingdom, that is to thirst and hunger for righteousness, to be merciful, to love our enemies, to seek justice and to love kindness. God will help us bear fruit. Perhaps there's a message here for the church. We ought not to move too quickly in judging those we consider unworthy or not like us. Ultimately, it is God who is the judge. And thank goodness, it is not up to us. We can get on with the mission that Jesus has given us to love God to love our neighbor, to love ourselves with our heart, soul, and mind. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, sometimes we are impatient. We make judgment about ourselves and about others. Sometimes we look for enemies, but help us to grow into your way, which is to embrace all which is to do the hard work of reconciliation and the long road of building peace. We give thanks that you are with us and we are not alone in this work. Amen.
currently 40,000 Palestinian refugees and 3,000 Syrian refugees live in an emergency camp originally set up in the country of Jordan following the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. Today those 43,000 people are served by one health center and one doctor. Half of the people living there don't have any health insurance. Accessing food is extremely difficult. Overcrowding, limited access to sanitation and food, and already weakened health conditions mean that people are more likely to get sick from COVID-19. In 2019, the United Church of Canada's Mission and Service Fund helped the Department of Service of Palestinian Refugees to build two greenhouses in the camp to teach women how to grow vegetables and provide food to take to market. Now the greenhouses overflow with vegetables, providing some employment and sense of purpose. Even with social isolation protocols in place, the organization continues to distribute more than 150 vegetable parcels to the poorest households inside the camp. Your gifts to the Mission and Service Fund mean that people living in such challenging conditions receive support even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. And today we place on the offering plate our symbols of time and talent and treasure. All that we are, we yield up for the work of holy love in the world. These gifts come from the seed that was sown in us by the good news of Jesus, the one anointed by love's power. Take this harvest from the wheat and weeds, sort it out for the missions and programs that help your people to shine like the sun in the heavenly city, here in this neighborhood and around the world through the Mission and Service Fund. Amen. Good friends, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. God Almighty, maker of the heavens and the earth, you did a good job, but did you really have to make those mosquitoes? Or was that one of the times you said yes to a world of contradictions? You are the mighty God who surrenders and yields to the cross. You, the victim of violence, who in all things has made us more than conquerors. You are the source of the great mystery that has become for us amazing grace. From your throne you declare the wheat and the weeds, let them grow together. And as a Jesuit brother once prayed, Arabs and Jews and Palestine, let them grow together. Documented and undocumented aliens, let them grow together. Settlers and First Nations and immigrant people, let them grow together. Blacks and whites of South Africa, let them grow together. Rich and poor, humble and haughty, let them grow together. All seasons of one's life, let them grow together. Joys and sorrow, laughter, tears, let them grow together. All contrarieties of the Lord, let them grow together. And to this prayer we add our own. Muslims and Christians, let them grow together. People on the rainbow spectrum, aces, allies, and friends, let them grow together. Liberals and conservatives, let them grow together. And now we pray, let your church be faithful and courageous in your mission, growing and sharing the harvest of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Let there be mercy and justice, understanding and peace between the nations, especially in anxious times. Lord, hear our prayer. Let there be support for those who are working on the front lines, those who are returning to work, those who cannot find work as the economy is reorganized. Lord, hear our prayer. Let there be a space where those who are taking vacations are renewed in the gift of creation, and that we will remember to cherish the earth and treat the future of all our relations wisely. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are going through a difficult time, the sick, the grieving, for all who are still at risk from COVID-19, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who are closest to us, for friendships that have stood the test of many years, for those with whom we have shared life and love, that we may discover great value in each day, giving and receiving the gift of appreciation. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this shared worship service. We hope to see you again next time. And let us go from this place knowing that we are loved. And let us go to plant seeds of justice and love. And may our hands be transformed and strengthened for the work ahead. May our heart be fiercely patient. And may our eyes see the promise of justice. Amen.